Allowel parti tal-laqa ta'na l-lum infukajna l-lum fuq il-prioritajiet tal-Unjoni Europea għal ħames snin li ġejjin u l-program tal-xol tal-Kummissjon. Kienem ftejim komuni illi dwar il-punti principali li għanna nifukaw il-ġibadihla waqt il-Kunsil tal-Europa. L-ewel punt kien il-tibdil ta' fil-klima u bat għansi aħna seb semmejna li huwa emerġenza tal-klima ta' kli għandu xaqsa mal... ...transformation on to e-car mobility. We focused a lot on the economic pillar, but also on the social pillar, with the idea of discussing amongst ourselves, but also at European level, a minimum wage, a European minimum wage. We have agreed that we will continue to press at European level the issue of migration. The issue of migration which cannot be decoupled from the uh, reforms and changes to Schengen and to freedom of movement. We have also reiterated that points related to Africa and African policy should not be only related to migration, but Africa needs to be taken within a global context. Finally, we have made it very clear that we are giving our total support to our Cypriot friends on the recurrent issues and that this support is unwavering. So with this, I think the first intervention should come from the Cypriot president. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Joseph. Άλλη αναφορά θα ήθελα να εκφράσω τις θερμές μου ευχαριστίες για τη φιλοξενία που μας επιφύλαξε, αλλά και να σε συγχαρώ για την άψογη διοργάνωση της Συνόδου αυτής. Είχαμε την ευκαιρία, όπως έχει προαναφέρει και ο Πρωθυπουργός της Μάλτας, να επαναβεβαιώσουμε την πίστη μας στο Ευρωπαϊκό Οικοδόμημα, την προσήλωση στην αναγκαιότητα εξέβρεση κοινών λύσεων στις πολλαπλέ προκλήσεις που αντιμετωπίζει η Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση. Στόχος και επίκεντρο όλων μας παραμένει πάντοτε ο Ευρωπαίος πολίτης, η ευημερία και η ασφάλεια του. Η Σύνοδος της Βαλέτας αποτελεί την πρώτη ουσιαστικά μεταξύ των επτά κρατών συνάντηση μετά τη νεολοκλήρωση των πρόσφατων εκλογών για το Ευρωπαϊκό Κοινοβούλιο. Την συζήτησή μας με τους φίλους ηγέντες απασχόλησαν επίσης τα εκλογικά κυρίως μηνύματα που προκύπτουν ως αποτέλεσμα των επιλογών των πολιτικών και τους τρόπους υλοποίησης. Συνεπώς η στρατηγική ατζέντα ήταν ένα σημαντικότατο, ένα έκ των σημαντικών σημείων τα οποία συζητήσαμε. Σε αυτό το πλαίσιο είχαμε μια γόνιμη ανταλλαγή απόψεων όσον αφορά τις θεματικές που θα αποτελέσουν τη νέα στρατηγική ατζέντα της περίοδου 19-24 εν ώψη του επικείμενου Ευρωπαϊκού Συμβουλίου της ερχόμενης εβδομάδας και οι οποίες θα συνιστούν τον άξονα των πολιτικών μας. Κοινό παρονομαστή των πολιτικών αυτών θα συνεχίσει να αποτελεί το πνεύμα αλληλεγγύης, ενότητας και αποτελεσματικής αντιμετώπισης των πολλαπλών προκλήσεων. Μια των κυριωτέρων θεματικών αποτελεί αναντίλεχτα το κρίσιμο ζήτημα του μεταναστευτικού. Οι χώρες μας ως κράτη-μέλη. Recently, uh, also uh, reiterated our uh, belief uh, in uh, the uh, need to boost uh, monetary uh, union. The uh, summit uh, uh, had to uh, look also at uh, uh, problems uh, such as uh, climate uh, change or climate emergency as uh, it has uh, been uh, called uh, and we do want the uh, European Union to set a very clear and forceful strategy for 2050 taking into consideration the special character of each 
country uh, so that uh, we can attain uh, the um, Paris objectives. Uh, with uh, these uh, a few words, I'd like to uh, also thank uh, the uh, support given uh, by uh, um, my friendly countries represented here, the support given uh, to uh, Cyprus in uh, defending uh, its uh, sovereignty, its rights, and its uh, EZ. Uh, the my fellow uh, heads of uh, state and government uh, uh, joined their voice uh, to uh, mine in expressing their condemnation of uh, the um, actions of uh, Turkey in uh, the uh, Eastern Mediterranean. You know the escalation of uh, recent uh, days, and we do uh, condemn these, uh, uh, this behavior that goes fully against uh, the principles and values of the European Union, particularly if uh, the uh, country that uh, violates them is uh, a candidate to EU membership. Uh, again, allow me to express uh, my uh, thanks for, to uh, my friends here present for uh, their uh, support and solidarity. We do want, together with our partners, to use all diplomatic means so that uh, these uh, um, illegal actions by Turkey are uh, stopped immediately. At the same time, I had the opportunity to update uh, my uh, friends and heads of state and government uh, as uh, to the recent developments in uh, Cyprus uh, so that uh, we can uh, find uh, a functional uh, solution to the uh, long-standing uh, Cypriot uh, problem, always uh, in full compliance uh, with the principles uh, and values of the European Union. Despite what is currently happening in the Cypriot EZ, despite the challenges and conflicts that have arisen recently, let me assure you all that we do want to work together and cooperate towards a solution, a viable solution to the problem. At the time, I'll close in uh, thanking everybody for uh, solidarity and the European spirit of unity that you have shown every time I explained what's happening in Cyprus. Thank you. Thank you, Nikos. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Premier Ministre, cher Joseph, pour l'organisation de ce sommet. Thank you, Prime Minister Joseph. Uh, thank you for hosting us. Uh, we had the occasion to speak with the Prime Minister on different topics, uh, bi bilateral and regional. In particular, we spoke of Libya. And in particular, I think that uh, we share the same vision with uh, Joseph Muska. I also want to say how much uh, we know, how much solidarity expressed by Malta by uh, the disembarkment is, has been precious. Uh, we need to have a closer disembarkment, uh, more solidarity, more protection. It's that mechanism which works, and that's the mechanism we have to make sure is ongoing. And uh, we support the initiatives that uh, you have um, spoke of, and we uh, want to continue in that direction. Uh, France supported and took part in the most uh, rapid way uh, to these uh, events. And our responsibility is to uh, continue in this direction. And uh, this meeting has been extremely uh, important because it allows us uh, in a geographical coherence to represent many different uh, political families and it brings a certain consistency uh, between our uh, positions. Uh, national uh, reinforcement, um, in, we have the same opinion in terms of migration and Libya. We have to sh show a shared front in terms of uh, the European relations, Europe and Africa. We need to develop over the next year a positive agenda, and that is more ambitious. And uh, 
With regards to um, coherence and consistency, um, we want to show our solidarity with to Cyprus. Turkey must cease its illegal activities in the uh, exclusive economic zone of Cyprus. Uh, we will not be weak on this point. We spoke of many themes uh, that are at the heart of the strategic agenda of the next years. Uh, the Prime Minister Joseph Muska spoke of these. Uh, the first is climate, of course, with the priority of uh, carbon neutrality. And um, we also, 12 European countries uh, support this initiative. And uh, we have also a social agenda uh, with uh, uh, minimum wage and uh, the Eurozone reform. And uh, with the uh, ministers of finance held an important meeting, a first step has been achieved on the basis of our mandate, which was uh, in December. And this uh, first step is not enough. We have to move forward and double our ambitions. We need to stabilize uh, the Eurozone. We need to have a European guarantee for deposits. And we have to uh, push our partners uh, and convince them that it's important for our sovereignty, for our joint common sovereignty. We have also to deal uh, with the theme of borders, reinforce the surveillance, and we um, um, form Schengen. And we have to develop a good strategy, a neighboring strategy with Africa in order to prepare us our policies for the years to come. And uh, the strategic European project um, is here. And we will be deciding who will uh, be the new leaders um, at European level. And uh, we they will have to answer to questions of e equality, economical, and other. And they will have to be bearers of a common vision, which is uh, will be in the agenda of uh, over the next years for Europe. So I thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, for having given giving us the opportunity to share on these themes. Thank you. I thank you, Joseph, uh, so very much for your hospitality. We are here today in Malta at the sixth uh, summit of uh, uh, European South. The first summit was in September 2016 in Athens, and it is with great pleasure that I see that uh, this initiative that was born in Athens has uh, today become uh, a very permanent institution that shows that uh, the uh, countries of the European South have a common, uh, common interest uh, to defend and common objectives within the European Union. Union. We do have also uh, common experiences, experiences that uh, we uh, share because of crisis and because of uh, the challenges we faced uh, in the past and the new challenges we'll have to face in the future. We talked about uh, the strategic agenda of the European Union and priorities must set in the next five years. We talked about uh, regional developments. And uh, obviously, we agreed uh, that uh, the European Union must have a world role to play with a very strong uh, foreign policy and uh, with a very clear messages of uh, protection of uh, state of law and international uh, uh, laws and uh, treaties. Today, we looked at uh, developments and what happens because uh, of uh, the violations uh, of uh, uh, carried out by Turkey of the uh, Cypriot uh, EZ. We expressed our full support to Nikos Anastasiadis. Uh, and again, we uh, agreed uh, in saying that uh, this is not a bilateral matter between uh, Cyprus and Turkey or um, trilateral, uh, if you want to include also Greece. Uh, we uh, said that these are matters that uh, touch on the relations between the European Union and uh, Turkey. So it is an EU 
Turkish matter, and uh, I believe we believe, and uh, uh, we said that uh, European Union will have to adopt specific measures if uh, Turkey does not stop this uh, uh, these illegal actions. The only way to solve uh, problems is obviously a dialogue, and it is through cooperation that we want. To to uh, establish stability in uh, the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, we want, however, everything to be done in full respect of uh, international uh, laws. And anybody who does not respect international laws uh, will suffer the consequences. We also discussed uh, the need to uh, support the implementation of this historical agreement, the so-called Treaty of Prespas, uh, that uh, opens the uh, European uh, road to uh, uh, Western Balkan uh, countries. Uh, we. Uh, I, Greece as the support of the uh, other uh, uh, countries of the European uh, South uh, in supporting uh, the um, uh, accession process of uh, Northern Macedonia. And this is a stand that we'll take also uh, next uh, week. We want to give uh, a very clear message to the peoples of the Balkans. Uh, uh, they do try to implement reforms so very hard, and uh, we want our message to be clear. We support them, and in doing so, we are uh, fully against any kind of uh, nationalism. Uh, the European road is uh, um, the only road for uh, um, Balkan uh, countries. However, we will have to examine uh, uh, the progress on a case-by-case -case, uh, um, approach uh, and see what kind of progress each country uh, has achieved. Uh, we do hope that Albania will be able to introduce uh, more reforms so as to open uh, the uh, road uh, to uh, European accession. Uh, we talked uh, about uh, also the uh, um, migra uh, migration flows uh, and uh, how the uh, burden will be shared uh, among all European uh, uh, Union member states and not only frontline countries uh, taking the full brunt of these uh, flows. We uh, said quite clearly that we do need a mechanism that will ensure a uh, safe return to um, uh, people, we uh, said that we need to uh, in strengthen the uh, social pillar, uh, strengthen the uh, economic and monetary uh, union, fight against uh, um, discrepancies and divergences uh, through by creating a European uh, uh, social security pension or unemployment fund. All this uh, uh, it is will be in uh, support of uh, the uh, peoples of uh, Europe. And in addition to that, we uh, want to achieve a uh, common minimum wage. Uh, the European uh, uh, citizens uh, have also spoken quite uh, clearly, particularly young people, when uh, talking about uh, the environment. We've seen uh, their awareness uh, really grow, and uh, this is uh, a warning sign for us, uh, the governments and uh, the leaders of uh, uh, governments, uh, that uh, uh, environmental matters are very important and must be a priority in the next five years. And for this reason, we must continue implementing the objectives of the Paris Agreement. With this few words, I'd like to thank once again Joseph for the hospitality. I'd like to thank also all the leaders, the heads of state and government of EU countries, of the southern EU countries, for their input. and for uh, the support uh, they have uh, shown uh, to uh, Cyprus uh, and uh, the um and the efforts undertaken by Greece in uh, the eastern Mediterranean thank you very much once again
to you, Alexis, particularly for the fact that you were the first to come up with this idea in Athens. Antonio? Good evening. I would like to start by thanking Mr. Muscat for welcoming us in this summit of the southern countries. I would like to start by expressing the complete solidarity of Portugal to Cyprus, the priority to defend international rights and law in all circumstances and the sovereignty rights of Cyprus to uh, exploit its own resources is fundamental. Plurality and solidarity is a funding value of the EU. And the value of solidarity goes to Cyprus and all the Baltic countries whenever their sovereignty is threatened. It's a value we all express also on migration. And we intend to share with solidarity with forefront countries the international protection that Europe still lacks. It's on the basis of the cohesion policy, which shall be applied when our cities, regions, or countries suffer and undergo an interna um, natural catastrophe. The same solidarity shall be applied to Ireland in the difficult relationships which arise from Brexit. Solidarity is a European value whenever it has to be applied. So I would like to express our complete solidarity to Cyprus. Secondly, this meeting, having taken place one week before the next council, certainly uh, we, uh, has talked about the strategic agenda. There are three priorities I would like to underline. First of all, give a positive answer to the anxiety of the European citizens for and the desire of European citizens for a greener Europe, a more social Europe, but solidarity for everybody. A greener Europe means a Europe um, betting on circular economy, of an, on a new paradigm of mobility and an, an energy transition, considering an increasing use and production of renewable energies. And for this to happen, we need a single energy market and overcome the gaps in the inter interconnections between all of us so that renewable energies and their benefits can be shared with solidarity. Secondly, we want a social Europe, investing in education, in long life, in lifelong training for all occasions. A social Europe guarantees safety and security to all their citizens, making sure that no one is left behind, especially in a moment of technological transition, both energy speaking and digital transition speaking and so on. Europe shall be at the forefront of this new economy. But we also need to advance together. We cannot leave anyone behind. And this is solidarity as well. Finally, Europe guaranteeing safety and security to all their citizens, facing terrorist threats, threats to our ways of life, and on our future. We need to guarantee to all of us, but especially to the younger generations, that they will have the opportunity to live in Europe with all the advantages Europe can give in this global world. Second priority, we need a strong European economy in this globalized world, which means an economy investing in innovation and thus in research and development. It's an economy that invests in the transition to the digital economy, an economy with an industrial policy which is smart, which enables it to exploit the um, challenges of climate and digital transitions to create a more stable and sturdy basis for our, um, fact, for our industries. And finally, an economy that may have a commercial policy, a trade policy, which does not close Europe as an economic space, but on the contrary, 
It promotes the good sides of globalization, which has made the difference in Europe. Our social standards, our environmental standards, our quality and our food quality and safety standards so that they no longer are only a privilege for the Europeans but a benefit for all the world. There can be no strong economy without a successful conclusion of a very ambitious process, which is the most ambitious process perhaps Europe has ever undertaken, which is the single currency. We are better prepared today than in 2008 and 2011, but it is fundamental to not, not to waste the opportunities we still have to conclude in a timely fashion an economic and currency um, unity. Next week, we can take an important step ahead so that the Eurozone can support an effort to converge and improve the situation. But we need to conclude by to conclude the bank, the banking union and the mechanism of uh, guarantee for deposits, backstop, and a stabilization mechanism, which is effective in times of crisis, which we do not uh, wish for, of course, but which we cannot eliminate. On other priorities in our strategic agenda, which includes uh, the conclusion of a strategic partnership with the African continent as soon as possible in the 21st century. Africa is our closest neighbor, and it is certainly the greatest opportunity for development at global level. Africa is certainly the area in the world with demographic and economic dynamics expecting um, Europe to be closer. And this is how we should look and see our relations with Africa and be able to implement and truly create this partnership with Africa. Joseph, again, thank you very much for welcoming us here in the summit. Joseph, uh, Let me thank my friend, the Premier Joseph, for the hospitality and for the occasion that is granted to us today to exchange some points of view. In such a delicate moment, uh, we are witnessing the wake of a new European legislation, and at the same time, uh, the eve of the uh, European Council meeting that is supposed to be extremely important. We have touched different issues on the common thread in dealing with these topics uh, has been the opportunity for a greater cohesion among us, being countries of the South Europe, we have to debate more, we have to intensify our dialogue to express, as we did today, for these issues a common awareness. I'd like you know, to, to briefly uh, sum up, uh, I can't go into the details of all the topics, we convened that we can absolutely express as a European Union a propulsive trigger and engine as for climate change. The conclusion for European Council have to be ambitious. For example, as regards the neutral carbon target by 2050 it stands for a challenge that cannot be faced by single countries alone. The climate change challenge requires a joint effort. Each and every one of us from this regard, Italy is more than willing to play its role and is already aligned with the European 2020 objectives and can even overcome this target and go beyond. We, are not, we do not want to rank first in class. We simply want to work jointly in this strategic direction and to express, allow me to say, an irradiating strength that should engage the other areas of the world. The climate change issues stands for a topic that has to be tackled in a synergic perspective 
as well as industrial policies. We cannot you know, just consider one aspect without including the reorganization or reshaping of the industrial political strategies. Another topic we all agreed upon, as I can synthesize, is the social pillar. We have to be jointly united also in this direction. There is a twofold interest that is uniting us, a rebalancing between the reduction and mitigation and sharing of risks that should not be an alternative, but supplementary. We have to work for an economic governance that has to be targeted to growth by supporting higher public investments. We cannot only limit ourselves to look at the target of stability within the scope of austerity. The slowing down of the global economic development is having a negative impact on the European economy, so it deserves a coordinated European answer. We can work together to identify new protection or safety measures like the European insurance against unemployment, the minimum wage at EU level. In this regard, moreover, we have to work intensively to strengthen the digital economy. We embrace the proposal of a pluriannual program for the European Union as for digital transformation, so a digital Europe. We need to play a role towards this higher level of competitiveness on an international level for the EU, and we also have to strengthen the digital strategic capabilities of Europe, the digital skills of our workers. Only in this way, Europe can actually compete with other countries like the US, China, to the global challenge. We need to develop and focus the utmost efforts to work to envisage new technologies, artificial intelligence, AI, blockchain, high-performance computing, and more. We need, of course, we tackled the issue of the mandatory flows. In this regard, I cannot but reiterate how distressing it is. After one year now, to see how the conclusions that we have reached unanimously at the European Council in June 2018 have not been yet translated into practical actions. We are now introducing a new European legislation, so we need to win this challenge. It's not conceivable that we keep on being abstract in our solidarity principles, not being able to translate these principles into practical actions. This is leading to our citizens' lack of satisfaction. So if these citizens that are not satisfied keep on not believing in us and being dissatisfied, this is going, of course, to lead us nowhere. We talked about Libya as well, and this stands for uh, great concern to us. Of course, the instability in Libya is also having a further negative impact as for the increase of migratory flows. So we need to work to stop to cease this fire. We need to engage ourselves and commit ourselves to keep on supporting the Libyan players to forge a new political dialogue to stabilize this uh, this area. We also, as southern European countries, need to work jointly to strengthen cooperation towards Africa. We can work to create a peer-to-peer -peer partnership increasing investments in this direction. Finally, a final remark to communicate, to testify our support and full help for the Cyprus government. Cyprus is completely entitled to 
require its sovereign rights to carry on all the economic measures it would deem necessary to protect natural resources in this economic exclusive zone. So we, together with our friends, we reiterated our full support to Cyprus. Thanks, Giuseppe. Pedro? I would like to thank for the hospitality and I would like to thank for the opportunity to be here with the other countries of the Mediterranean. I would like to show solidarity and uh, support of the Spanish government to Cyprus and to his president and to the whole government regarding the oil protection on behalf of the um, of Turkey. And some reflections we had during the meeting. First of all, uh, last 26th of May, uh, European citizens spoke with their boat and they said they wanted a better Europe. They feel fine with the Europe we have now. It's a political model that joins the economic development with solidarity and social cohesion, the rights and democracy. And with a majority, they increased the participation in the vote, but also they showed their support to political families that defend a better Europe. The other leaders said, and I don't want to repeat myself, I would like to say that the strategy agenda that we are talking about, that we are developing on behalf of the member states, is essential. Before talking about people who will be the leaders during the next five years, the European Commission, the Council, the Parliament, and the High Representatives of the European Union, we have to talk about contents. Contents for a, a Spanish government have been explained by all the leaders. First of all, the climate emergency. We have to talk about climate emergency, especially when we talk between Mediterranean countries, especially when we see the level of pollution. Um, and uh, the poverty that we're creating in the sea. In the declaration, you will see not only the commitment of all the governments here with the protection of our environment, with the ecological transition of the economy, with the need that the next budget uh, needs more resources for the climate change. But we also have to talk about approving laws that boost the circular economy in Europe or laws that boost the use of plastic, a uh, single use. I would like to tell you that the ecological transition needs to be one of the main pillar of this strategy agenda for the next five years at communitarian level. We have the Paris Agreement. We have the strategies that we're developing in each country the interconnection as the Prime Minister of Portugal was talking about. Essentially, I want to say that we think it's fundamental that we have a commitment with the ecological transition. Secondly, we have to talk about technological revolution. This has an impact on the education of our kids. This has an impact on the way we relate with the citizens through administrations. This impacts as well industries that are the driver of each economy. And eventually, this new communitarian budget for the following five years, we have to bet on digitalization. And we have to do it at a European level, because scale economies are fundamental and we have to compete with other powers such as China and United States. A third point relates to the social Europe. Social Europe. We want economic development, we want um, competition, but we want to redistribute the uh, wealth. 
Now there's the disparity of wealth, and it's not acceptable. The governments that are here talking about a minimum uh, wage is essential. Talking about the a, a budget, a European budget with this goal is fundamental and has to be a strong decision because resources are very important. So next week we will have the chance to talk about this matter. Spain will support a stabilization of this European budget, but we will also talk about how to use to better use the resources in this Eurozone, especially to fight against potential crises that we might be facing in the future. And finally, because here we talk about everything already, the last point uh, relates to Africa. Spain is a country with a coast line that is 15 kilometers away from Morocco. Therefore, we know very well the challenges that Africa uh, implies for Europe. As the Portuguese Prime Minister said, Africa is an opportunity, and this is how we have to consider Africa. We cannot talk about Africa just to understand how to fight migration, but we have to look at Africa as a continent that gives us opportunities and we have to create relationships. We are doing it with Morocco and Spain, but we really think that from an EU viewpoint, we have to use more resources, better political intelligence with a continent that gives us many opportunities. I would like to thank the Maltese government uh, for this extraordinary evening. I would like to thank Joseph for the hospitality um, that he's given us.